Moving on to our last category of ionic compound is when the ionic compound involves something that is called polyatomic ions. Everything that we talked about before this point, the ions in those examples are called monoatomic. Mono meaning one. And now in this section, we will talk about polyatomic. Poly meaning many. For, so for example, your cast is made up of a substance that is CaSO4. Ca is your ion, and SO4 is also your ion in this compound. Your positive charge, your cation, is calcium, and is only one type of element, calcium. That's called a monatomic ion, whereas sulfate is composed of multiple atoms. Because it is composed of multiple nonmetals that has one single charge, we call that a polyatomic ion. Another example is your fertilizer. It is made of a polyatomic ion called ammonium as your cation and nitrate as your anion. Both of these are polyatomic ions. There are many polyatomic ions, and here's a list of them. Highlighted in red asterisks are the ones that I asked that you memorize for this class. You need to memorize its name, its formula, and its charge. For example, the first one, hydroxide. You need to know that it is composed of two elements, oxygen and hydrogen, and together they are a negative one charge, meaning they are anions. It turns out all of them are anions except for one. Ammonium is the only polyatomic cation. Its formula is NH4 and it has a charge of positive one. You also need to know nitrate, which is NO3, negative one. You need to know chlorate, ClO3, charge negative one. You need to know carbonate, CO3, charge two minus. Hydrocarbonate or bicarbonate means the same thing, is HCO3 with charge negative one. Cyanide is CN, charge negative one. Acetate is C2H3O2, that's a long one, has a charge of negative one. Sulfate, SO4, two minus, and phosphate, PO4, three minus. I recommend you making flashcards to memorize these polyatomic ions. Now the good thing about naming ionic compounds containing polyatomic ions is that they're quite simple. So for example, if you have sodium and chloride here, its name is simply adding the name of the metal plus the name of the polyatomic ion. So that's sodium chlorate. And of course, if it's a transition metal as a cation, you also need to follow the rules of including Roman numerals, but in this case it is not. Notice that you don't change the ending if your anion is a polyatomic anion. You keep it as chlorate and not chloride. And if you have ammonium, you simply say ammonium. So you just say, in this case, ammonium chloride. Again, it's chloride because your anion is the chlorine. All right, so let's have a final checkpoint. What is the formula of iron 3 hydroxide? All right, hopefully you made some progress. First, and from the name, we know that it is Fe3+. And you also recognize that hydroxide is a polyatomic ion, OH minus one. So if each OH is minus one, you would need three of the OHs. You need three of the hydroxides to cancel out your one iron. So mathematically, it looks like this to give you that charge balance, uh, giving you the ratio of one to three. So to write the formula for polyatomic ions, you need that whole parentheses. The parentheses there says you have three of the OH. Without writing the parentheses, that three would only apply to the hydrogen. And you would have three hydrogens, one oxygen, and one iron, which is not the case. We are trying to say here that for every one iron cation, you have three hydroxides, meaning three oxygens and three hydrogens. So that parentheses is very important. So the answer here is C. Okay, so let's have a summary of how to name ionic compounds. Hopefully this flowchart will help you get the hang of things. First, in ionic compound, you must realize that there's gonna be your cation and your anion. Your cation will be a metal or NH4, and your nonmetal. Let's focus first on the cation. You first ask yourself, does the metal form one positive ion or does it form more? If your answer is one, and that's because it's a metal that is in group 1A, group 2A, group 3A, or if it's zinc, silver, or cadmium, then you just use the name of the element. Or if it's ammonium, you just use the name of ammonium. 
Or if you answer that it can form more than one positive ion because it is a transition metal or in group 4A or in 5A, then you want to use Roman numerals to designate the charge of that cation. On the anion side, you want to ask, is the nonmetal ion formed from one atom or groups of atoms? If you answer that it comes from one atom, then it's called a monatomic ion, and you want to change the ending to I. If it's a group of atoms, then it's a polyatomic ion. You don't change the ending, you just use the polyatomic ion's name. Thank you.